What's up guys and girls, we are here again with another PS4 video. We're looking at Pexy123 in the M46 pattern, the TA9 medium, American tank. And we're going to look at Miravanka, but we're going to be looking at it a different way. Uh, whilst any videos you may have seen I've actually placed or uh, seen me in game, I will generally always go around the left hand side so the map is viewed. As it is, Pexy takes a completely different way. And the way in which the game is played uh, covers several different, different aspects of the actual game itself and how you, you need to look at playing it and how you can use your tank effectively alongside platoon mates. So as you can see at the moment he will be going down this side of the map with his platoon mates as uh, a lot of people will do when they're in the platoon is actually follow their own mates. Uh, but at the same time they are trying to drag a couple of other tanks with them but they are slightly slower than what they are so the primary point of this current manoeuvre is to roll forward as fast as you can, see what cover you can get behind and see what you can spot. Now we're not trying to look at yellowing forward, Rambo or anything like that, he just goes forward relatively slowly. It, what would be a, a general pace whereby you can ensure that you are able to escape, should you need to, but at the same time be able to spot people as far away as possible and as close to their spawn as you possibly can. The reason being that you want to try and uh, stem or stop the flow of their push forward. Now as it is, this is what generally happens is you find halfway along the map, you come across the other mediums that are doing a very similar role. But because it's played in such a way that he's able to get into cover, he's not going to take any shots or he's not going to take very many shots from tanks that are able to hit him because of where he's located on the map. Making sure he has the cover, making sure he has other tanks around him that can stem their advance forward should they try and flank a position which you can see is covered by his third platoon mate. And then you can start working out what you can do to try and push forward and get the other team out of position. One of the things we're looking at to do now because it's more of a stalemate similar to what would be the stalemate on the other side of the map that you can see is you will only tend to find people who are out of cover once they've been undetected. So at the moment the tank that's in front of us is parked behind the building. He shouldn't, there are a lot of people who would, he shouldn't remove himself from that building because he's detected. He'll get shot straight away. So what you're waiting to happen if you are going to aim at him is wait a couple of seconds after he's undetected then roll forwards and detect him because then it'll be the point at which he's actually out in the open more than likely because he's trying to shoot other people or he's trying to get into a better position either way he will always be out of cover uh, usually about five to ten seconds after uh, it's very unlikely that someone's going to sit behind a building if they're undetected without the opportunity of moving forward and getting into a better position now as it is because the tank in front is slightly distracted by the tanks he's able to get a few good side shots into him and eventually get the kill and this starts the ball rolling for very similar other tactics they use between him and his platoon mates. It's the whole flanking, it's the whole distraction technique. Now what you're trying to do is again push forward but not push forward Rambo style. You don't want to be going all out thinking you can take on every tank because you can't. You need to use the people around you for an advantage. Now fortunately his other teammates have actually backed up and got relatively close so they can sort of help out in some way. So this, this is what's going to happen. Pex is going to go around the side and flank. He's going to shoot at people that are more interested in shooting the ones that they can actually see because it's undetected. Again, moving around and undetected is one of the things that people will do. So try and figure out what might happen. If you can't see a tank, think why. What tank is he driving? What is he likely to do? Now, this is kind of rushed a bit in the way in which uh, it, it all happens. It's difficult to explain because it all happens so very quickly. But taking the... Uh, the heat, so to speak, not necessarily actually taking it around, but taking the heat, making people look at you, allows teammates to go along and, and shoot other people in the back or get damaging shots on people, or even critical hits, just getting them trapped, stopping them from moving. It all works out as being that you can then uh, work out another move to try and relieve a flank or try another move to remove the people that are in front of you and stopping your advance going there. Fortunately, we're now at a point whereby the platoon has worked out relatively well. They've took out a few of the tanks that are main and in front of them, and now they're just going on to clean up a few other people. One of the things this has actually done, because they're moving around the platoon together, a lot of the enemy team have got themselves split up, which is not ideal, because it means that they don't have the cover, they don't have uh, the hillside, or even the tank advantage to be able to help remove people from the game. One of the things you may have noticed throughout this entire game is that one tank being highlighted is being shot by two or three different tanks from its team, which all in all is not really ideal for their team, but works out as being that the, the communication between each tanker, the way in which they've uh, maneuvered themselves around tanks has meant they can get the clear shots on. 
And what's happened eventually here, like I say, because people are being split up, he's only coming across people at a one-on-one. -on -one. A uh, bit of an unlucky shot to get the tracking damage would have probably been ideal to actually sit sit still and take the actual shot to kill him. But he's only actually taking people on 1v1. Because those tanks don't have a lot of health, they don't have the gun that's going to be able to take him out because he's got a lot of HP compared to what that ram can do. The Tiger 2 won't have as good reload. The, the Pershing itself doesn't have the turret rotation. So whilst on their own they're not very good tanks, when you're together they will and can make a big difference. Now this all leads to this final point of taking out the heavy tank that was cracked earlier. He was trying to come down and help out the two tanks in front, uh, the medium sorry, the T-54, all because he didn't have the backup with him, he wasn't able to move forward and take them out. So again, he was running around in his M46 pattern, taking people one on one because they'd all got split up. Whether he noticed that or not is kind of irrelevant because it's kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of a simple way of putting it, it's map awareness and situation awareness, but at the same time you can get a bit of luck with that. But it, it may all stem down as well to the whole distraction technique in that people are interested in taking out one tank whereas another tank can run around and, and deal all the damage. Even if you do die in a game, if you do a fair amount that actually helps your team out and wins, if you die and win but you've done something that helps, then that's good. I don't, I wouldn't really say I have a particularly amazing survival ratio, but the amount of damage that I try and do before I die, or assisted damage, is what I aim for, because I'd prefer to have the win and have the XP. Now, as we go to the end of the game, the push itself, it, it didn't seem that much in terms of the actual firepower that was going down the side, but taking into account the destruction of having your platoon mates going round, opening up flanking opportunities, having their team split up, taking advantage of all those, they're very relatively small things that you can do in a game, if you have lots of them, they will add up, and at the end of it, you can then have a ridiculously good game, like Pexy did in, in the pattern now, and you could then apply it to other maps. There are different ones that you may not be able to have as much of a, a chance to, for example, uh, Prokhorovka, because of the amount of cover that there isn't available, there is always going to be stalemates within the middle of the map, but take a, a look at how this happened on the city maps, maybe city maps might be another good idea. Uh, ghost town being one of the an, another example and see how it is that you can better use a platoon system to try and distract and remove people from the game but that's it for for this stand video there are another two that are uh, ready to upload i'll be doing them on a different day try and split them out um and again if this video gets enough likes and views we'll look at trying to give pexy a, a decent reward for his uh ridiculous game when it's just mastery device, mastery device tankers aren't exactly given out left, right and centre, so they they are relatively difficult to come across, more so when you're in a platoon, because there's uh, less damage to be shared around, because you're all relatively good. So as always, if you did like it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.